Hi everybody, Richard Tromans here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Uh, today we're doing another product demo. Uh, this one, it is Cortical, which is a NLP driven doc analysis system. Uh, but Cortical is a little bit different to some of the other ones that you may have seen already in the market. Uh, to tell us a bit more about it is Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Richard. Thanks for the opportunity. Let me give you a quick walkthrough through the contract intelligence product. Okay. Um, so again, Cortical IO contract intelligence extracts key information from documents. It interprets that information. It compares, searches documents. Our customers use it for general contracts, leases, insurance policies, RFPs, for example. The key differentiation is the underlying approach to natural language understanding that provides higher accuracy in doing those extractions, interpreting, comparing, and searching. So let's start off here, sort of the standard contract that you might want to, a lease that you might want to have somebody take a look at review. Um, the way contract intelligence works is you have the idea of what do you want to actually extract? And so here we're looking at the user interface for contract intelligence. We'll click on the mapping manager and here are the kinds of things that you'd want to extract from a lease. One of the powers of contract intelligence is you can define what you want to extract and easily and quickly train your own models for different kinds of document types. So here you see the classic things, leasee, leasor, description. Now the interesting thing is that it can not only extract the information, it can interpret it. So based on the description it pulls from a lease, it can basically make the decision of what kind of lease it is. So the way it would work is let's go, let's grab this document and we'll drop it in. So right now it's basically ingesting it and it's done. And what we can do now is basically look at this lease. What you see on the left is the lease itself. And what you see on the right is the basic extractions. So if I wanna see who the leaseor is, I can go there. It will highlight it. And these are the different extractions you saw in the mapping manager. So it not only extracts individual items, such as price, such as you know deposit, it will also extract clauses. One of the interesting things about using the natural language understanding is that it's easy to extract dates. It's harder to figure out what those dates mean. So for example, here we can look at the lease date, which is when it was entered into versus the commencement date. And you see here, it doesn't say commencement anywhere, so it's not a keyword search um, or a regular expression search. It actually understands the context. So it says the lease shall begin on the state. So that's some of the power of contract intelligence is to be able to make those um, interpretations and understanding. And now if we go down to the description, we see that based on the description, it made the assumption, it made the interpretation that it was real estate, which makes sense. The other thing in here that you see is there's confidence scores. So it tells me how confident it is on the kind of interpretation it made. Um, and if you look here, there's a general confidence level of the document itself. And so the idea is a, person reviewing the contract can basically look through and very quickly click on this and say, yes, that's correct. And basically review the contract very quickly and have that information. So not only do folks want to actually extract and look at information, they also want to potentially compare. So let's not, well, we don't care about saving these. Try this again. Okay, and as you see here, there are various kinds of contracts. Again, one of the power of contract intelligence is that you can define your own um, document type, you can define the own extractions and the, your own interpretation. Um, one of the document sets we work with from a demo point of view is, I don't know if you're familiar with the Atticus data set, but here's a wide variety of different kinds of contracts. If we wanted to do a compare, let's take a look at a compare option. So let's take a look at the Twitter terms of service. 
So I have three different versions. I have the original, you know, 2016, 2018, 2020. So if I click on it again, I get the document on the left and I get the extractions on the right. Now, the interesting thing is I would like to potentially compare that with the next version of the Twitter agreement. So what it's doing now is comparing the two. And what it'll do is it will go through each one of the extractions and then compare the extractions. So jurisdiction is the same. Actually, if I go back to the top, it will give me a overall confidence score. If you notice here, it will give me both a red line of the difference between the governing law provision here, but also give me a semantic score. And again, that's one of the key differences of contract intelligence is it has a semantic understanding. So for example, under termination for convenience, you can see that there is a difference in the actual text, but from a semantic point of view, the meaning is the same. So it makes it easier for somebody to take a look, compare and decide what they need to look at. And ideally, if I want to, I can add another document to compare. And let's take a look at the last Twitter agreement. So we can see how the Twitter agreement has evolved over time in terms of potential changes. And the other thing we can do is we can do a full document compare. And so this gives somebody the power to basically the kinds of use cases we have with our customers are, again, comparing previous, comparing documents that have been returned with the original document that's submitted. And this provides a quick and easy way of doing that. But the other power of this semantic understanding is the ability to do searches. And so if we take a something like, let's take the Splunk agreement. And if I look at the warranty of it, I can grab the warranty. And search for other warranties that have similar feelings. So it looks like the IBM is somewhat similar, but not exactly. So it allows me to actually search. One of my favorite searches is I go to lease and I look for plane. So the interesting thing is if I look here, plane doesn't actually exist in the text, but aircraft does. So again, from a semantic understanding point of view, it basically can match and do similarities between words that don't actually mean the same. Um, our classic example in insurance is cost of policy versus funding method. Totally different words, totally different phrasing, keywords won't match that, but the semantic meaning is the same in the insurance context. Um, and so this gives you a sort of quick overview um, in terms of the power of being able to develop and create your own document, let's actually go create our own document. So let's say I wanna create a new document type, let's call it reseller agreement. I click here, I have no targets at this point. So let's create a couple targets. Let's create party A, party B, governing law, so good I can type. So let's save that. And now I've got a reseller agreement here. What I'll do is I'll upload it to the system. Since the system doesn't know about reseller agreements yet, I need to train it. And here's the process for training um, a reseller agreement. 
So here on the left, I have the agreement. On the right, I have the extractions. Notice nothing is filled out. What I can do here is basically grab this, mark that as party A, grab this, mark it as party B. Let's scroll down and look for governing law. Mark that as governing law. And that's literally the way you can train the system. So by training it with 50 to 100 documents, you can basically create a model that will extract information from any kind of document, be it a reseller agreement, be it NDA, be it any of those. Um, so don't know how I'm doing on time, Richard, but hopefully that was a quick run through of contract intelligence from Cortical IO. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. A um, few questions. And obviously, you know, if you've looked at a lot of uh, contract analysis and extraction systems, uh, you'll know that obviously the devil is in the detail. Um, Correct. When it comes to the user experience and so forth. I mean, when you say it, it, you can train it up on 50 to 100 examples, I mean, some people would say, well, yeah, that makes sense for a relatively simple document where there's not a lot of variation, you know, between the various terms and so forth. But I mean, is that is that really realistic across all contract types? It. Of course, as you say, your mileage may vary, but one of the under but one of the key things of contract intelligence is that underlying semantic model that says even if the terms are different, it's quicker to train. Um, one of the things that we highlight is that it does in fact take fewer documents to get reasonable accuracy in terms of training. Gotcha. And so are you, I mean, and it, this is alluded to in your marketing material, that you use a different approach to say, let's say, for example, Kira or some of the other well-known uh, doc analysis companies I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, I mean, are you taking a different approach or have you just put a lot more time into the sort of prefiguring the natural language processing or which, which also would be surprising is they you know they've been around for a decade as well so i mean i'm just trying to figure out how how could you be getting better results if you are getting better results right so unfortunately we don't have the time to dive into it now i have a 20 slide presentation on it but the underlying difference is we use machine learning techniques but the key differentiation is this idea of what's called semantic folding um, classic, and I'm probably sort of getting a little too technical here, but classic natural language understanding is statistical based. And so you need a large number of examples for it to be, you know, accurate, et cetera. What we've got is an approach that um, called semantic folding that's more representational um, based on some work that was done by Jeff Hawkins out here in the Valley. It's a representational model versus a statistical model of natural language and that's what allows us to get the better accuracy gotcha so just just i mean obviously these are approximate <laughs> uh, points but just generally you would say that cortical is using a different approach to companies like kira or ebrevia and other well-known companies in the us and uh, canada for the underlying natural language approach to interpreting, to extracting information, interpreting search, yes, there is a, the semantic folding represents a different approach combined with machine learning and other techniques. Gotcha. Now, it also looked like there was a whole bunch of contract types that you had pre-trained. So if I was a, if I was interested and I bought a license with Cortical, and let's say I just want to work on US language um uh, english language uh contracts mm -hmm. what could i get out of a box and what will i have to train myself so what our experience working with the wide range of customers is you know as you sort of alluded to at the start everybody does ndas not very interesting well understood where we excel and where our customers use it is where they basically create a model specific for the interpretations of the company. So basically out of the box, you get um, the ability to train to your specific needs, your interpretations. What we found is, for example, um, in insurance policies, we have different insurance companies looking at the same policy, policies wanting to interpret different things. 
So the difference is we don't provide out of the box solutions in terms of for an NDA, but what we do do is provide the flexibility to allow you to quickly and easily train to your specific needs and your specific documents. Gotcha. Fantastic. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. It makes total sense. And just just the last question. Uh, I mean, if law firms, and I, I guess honestly, one one slight uh, extra question on that is presumably this will work <laughs> in any type of English language, and also, I guess, will it work in other languages? I mean, for, you know, because your, tra- your initial training set uh, of sample documents that you're going to run through call to call to build your model, if they're British English, that's going to be fine, I presume. Correct. Um, we support the product now supports German in addition to English, um, but the underlying again semantic folding technology actually works with nine different languages, and so it's fairly easy to adapt the product. We just haven't had the market requirement yet to do other languages. So English and German is what's available now. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, final two questions. Uh, a <laughs> lot of there's always lots of questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, some, you know, the pricing is always a bit of a pain when it comes to this type of work. Uh, some companies are still charging per document, uh, analyzed. Some people are charging uh, with sort of data used, you know, because these are the big bulk review type of tasks. Uh, how are you approaching the pricing model? Uh, Our approach to the pricing model is documents uploaded into the system. You can analyze it as many times as you want. You can analyze it with different models. Sometimes different groups within an organization have different requirements, you know, risk versus compliance versus general review. So it's basically uploaded per document. Um, The other thing I didn't touch on in the demo, giving me the opportunity, is all the information that you extract is actually stored in the database. And it's very easy to hook that up to a um, business intelligence tool to get, you know, aggregate view of risk, aggregate view of um, the different kinds of terms, extractions you've got. So sorry, I had to stick that in. Fantastic. And very, very last question. Just to get this right, I did a bit of research a while ago, and the company is about 10 years old. Is that right? That's correct. And so the history of the company is it started off as a research project in natural language understanding, built the semantic folding approach and technology around that, um, then did some bespoke projects around that. And out of those bespoke projects came the products that you see on our website today, contract intelligence and message intelligence. So it's been an evolution of the company. Fantastic. And also uh, on your website, you you talk a lot about sort of management consulting and, and those kind of clients. Are you, are you, you know, are you going to welcome uh, phone calls from law firms and in-house legal teams? I mean, do you want those clients or, or do you want to stick more with your sort of uh, other types of clients? Well, one of the things about contract intelligence is, although it's called contract intelligence, it's really great at doing any kind of document. So as you note on our website, you know, management consulting, insurance companies, things like that. Um, Lawyers, law firms, more than welcome to use. Um, It turns out that they end up with more sort of, I was going to say, you know, NDAs, standard documents, um, which we can do, but where we really add value is where the contract is not sort of your standard form contract and so lawyers that deal with that well i think think certainly the 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 large commercial law firms uh the big uh in-house legal teams would find that of interest so uh, that's great to know yeah well thanks steve i wish we could spend longer on it and perhaps we'll get a chance to do a a deeper dive another day but uh, for now we'll have to leave it there but thank you very much uh thank you richard for the opportunity appreciate it Uh, my pleasure 